Hi, welcome to episode 16 of the Gentle Knitter podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario. Today is Sunday, May 28th. Beautiful sunny Sunday. Uh, I'm super excited to get a chance to record an episode today. Um, I'm celebrating a couple of big milestones for the podcast. Number one, it's been over a year since I started. Um, my first episode was on a- April 16th, I believe. And so the the anniversary just came and went. <laughs> and I didn't really notice until, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, I wonder how long I've been doing the podcast. And then I checked and I was like, oops, I forgot. I, I had thought, well, when I reach a year that, you know, I'd have a special episode, but that didn't happen, which is fine. I uh, tend to like things to be low key. Um, For my birthday, for instance, I never want to party. I don't like a big fuss. I really love to go out for dinner with my husband and maybe some friends or um, have a couple people over to play games or go see a movie, that kind of thing. I am not very comfortable with big (laughs) to-dos. Partly because I'm fairly introverted and, you know, big, splashy social events kind of stress me out. But I just like to keep things simple. So anyway, happy anniversary to the podcast. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience so far. And I definitely intend on keeping going for definitely another year if not more it's uh it's just been very enriching I've loved love love talking to you and getting a lot of beautiful and heartwarming feedback and it's just opened a lot of doors in terms of just connecting with other people and finding out what else is going on in the knitting world and talking about the things that interest me and really finding out that there are a lot of other people who are interested in similar things. And, you know, it's not just about finding like-minded people. It's also opening up windows onto uh, other other experiences, other interests. And um, that's what I appreciate from other podcasts. And I think that um, if I can offer something slightly different or... Um, you know, just talk about the things that interest me, maybe it would interest you. And so far, it's been a really incredibly positive experience. So thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving the video thumbs up, for joining the Ravelry group and sending me beautiful comments. I get a lot of just really, really thoughtful and generous feedback. And I really deeply appreciate it. Speaking of subscribers, the other big milestone for the podcast is that, believe it or not, I have 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, which blows me away. I cannot believe that there are that many people who watch my podcast, and there's probably more because, you know, not everybody subscribes. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for um, just, you know, making, encouraging me. And um, it's, it's just a joy. So thank you. All right. Like I said, I don't like a big fuss. So let's move on to what you are here for, which is the knitting. So what have I been up to lately? Well, I have been working on some samples, which I can't show you. I don't really even have them in my possession anymore. Although I am working on a very beautiful sample right now that I can talk about. And uh, so I will show you that. And I will also show you what I've been spinning. And I will talk about my mini memories blanket, which I talked about in the last episode. I've got a couple of beautiful things that were sent to the podcast that I would like to show you. And um, 
I think I think that's going to be it. So let me uh, jump in and we'll talk about what I've been up to. Before I go on, I want to mention that I'm actually recording on a different computer today. So if you notice a difference in the um, the visual quality or the sound quality, I really wanted to record today and I forgot to bring my work laptop home, which is what I usually record on. So hopefully it won't be too bad. And uh, the other thing is that because it's a beautiful sunny day, all of my neighbors have decided that this moment was the moment to cut their lawns. <laughs> There's like three lawnmowers going right now. I've closed the windows, so hopefully you won't hear it. But if you do hear kind of a background uh, hum, that that's what it is. But it's not going to stop me. I wanted to talk to you today. So, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is a sample that I am doing for Ashley Usling. And you probably know her from the Wolfful podcast, which is an audio podcast uh, that has been going for a while now. She's got, I think, 79 episodes. And it's a really wonderful, um, a wonderful podcast. It's one of my favorites. What I like about Ashley's podcast is that is it is incredibly thoughtful. She really takes the time to talk to different people that are involved in the fiber industry, whether it's designers or makers, um, producers, she uh, farmers. You know, she really uh, her scope is quite wide and it's not just yarn it she talks about different types of fiber uh, pursuits if you will and her her conversations are are always very in depth she asks great questions uh, we find out a lot about um, the person's um, creative process their history where they come from what their philosophy is I feel like I always learn something and I'm always inspired when I uh, listen to one of her podcasts. So I highly recommend you check her out. Um, and so Ashley also works with Carrie Bostic Hogue on Making Magazine. And that is actually how I came into contact with Ashley because I have also recently joined the Making Team. Uh, which is super exciting. I am basically, um, how would I explain my role? So I am helping Carrie with all, all of the inquiries that come in um, through Ravelry and through her website, all of the pattern uh, support questions, if you will. And I also manage her account and her groups and all that on Ravelry. So I have been doing that for a little over a month now, and it's been really very, very fun. I really enjoy it. So if you have a question about one of Carrie's patterns, chances are that I will be answering them. And um, it's been really uh, very exciting and, and really uh, a fun challenge to have somebody ask me a, a question about a pattern that I am not currently knitting or that I or I don't even have the work in front of me to answer the question. Um, so it's really like detective work. <clears throat> People will write and say, I don't understand this line of the pattern or whatever. And, and basically uh, by reading the pattern and sort of imagining in my mind what what they're doing, where they're at, and what their what their problem is. Um, I'm I'm more or less kind of knitting in my mind, which <laughs> which is really cool. I didn't know I could do that, but it's been really fun. I um, I think that looking down the road, um, I always wondered what I would do after I retire, which is really coming up surprisingly. Um, I will be retiring in about seven years from my for my my job. I started very young. I started when I was 24, and basically I will be getting a pension at 55. So I will be retiring fairly soon, and 
I can't really see myself retiring and then not doing anything. So one of the things that I'm thinking of doing as a second career, if you will, is doing tech editing for patterns. So when Carrie asked me if this was the, the sort of um, pattern support job was of interest to me, I, I jumped on it because I thought this would be great experience for maybe a future career in tech editing. So anyway, all of that to say that through working with Carrie, I met Ashley, well, I met Ashley, and she asked me if I would be interested in doing some sample knitting for her. And I said yes, I was very happy to knit. Uh, she told me what the what the sample was and the yarn, and I thought it was a really wonderful opportunity to knit something incredibly beautiful and also with some really gorgeous yarn that I had never tried before. So let me talk to you or let me show you what I'm what I'm knitting. Basically, it's a rewrite of a pattern that Ashley had already uh, released and she had actually released it in um, volume two of Making Magazine. And the pattern is called the Orchard Grass Stole. So let me find the pattern photo. If you haven't seen this magazine yet, it's absolutely beautiful, of course. I'm such a fan of pretty much everything that Carrie does. But this is the Orchard Stole. Um, you're not seeing it all that well in the photo. Well, I mean, the photo is great. It's just my, it's not coming up all that well on the screen. I will try and I will insert a photo right here. So that's the beautiful orchard grass stole that was in issue number two of Making Magazine. Ashley wanted to rewrite the pattern to use a very beautiful yarn that she actually carries in her shop. That's one thing that I forgot to mention is that if you go to woolful.com, you will see that there is a mercantile tab where you can purchase different yarns that are produced in small batches, that are produced artisanally, that are very uh, minimally processed, and there's some really, really beautiful stuff in there. So if you're into that kind of thing, I highly suggest you check her shop. But anyway, so she wanted me to use this Moki yarn. It's Moki Heritage, which is a gorgeous very uh, rustic yet very soft yarn from Romania and uh, so here the um, I'm just gonna read you here the heritage yarn is a mix of wools one that brings softness and one that brings durability the Romanian merino sheep gave us their soft squishy wool and we mixed it with a bit of naturally brown tige wool that's t-i-g-a I e I'm not at all familiar with that breed, um, but uh, so they do that mix to create um, this first shade that we call industrial. It is a so it's kind of a a light grayish brown that's sort of a bit cafe au lait. That's quite a good representation of the color. It's really really beautiful yarn. It's it's got quite a bit of lanolin still left in it, so as you work you can really feel it on your hands but uh, and uh, when it's washed it just puffs up so beautifully the swatch for this was absolutely stunning but uh, I will show you where I am at so I finished the uh, the stole is basically starts with a uh, an old shale lace and then it goes into for the body of the of the sh uh, stole you get a really pretty lace pattern so this is what I have so far it's a fairly wide it's going to be a fairly wide stole and I think you can see the the lace detail fairly well there of course it's not blocked so these um, you know these little scallops will will be 
um, won't curl up like that once it's blocked. But anyway, I'm really enjoying working on this. It's uh, there's something about working a lace uh, a lace pattern in a really rustic yarn that really appeals to me. Also, I love lace in kind of neutral colors like this. Um, it just really let me see if I can give you a better view up close of the pattern and how it looks in the yarn. It's just really beautiful. It's a, it's a very easy pattern and um, I, I'm loving knitting on it. So thank you, Ashley, for giving me this beautiful project and also for letting me uh, talk about it on my podcast. Um, I should tell you that the original pattern is available in Ravelry as an individual download. So uh, you don't need to have a copy of making issue number two to have access to the pattern. Although I highly recommend <laughs> you uh, get your hands on this magazine if you can find it. It's uh, I think it's been reprinted, but um, it's a really beautiful one. And to kind of follow up on this, uh, issue number three has come out, and uh, the theme is dots. And this is definitely my favorite one so far. First of all, it heavily features uh, the color blue. Pretty much all of the projects in the in the magazine are done in blue. There's a lot of kind of indigo-y blues in here. And anybody who knows me knows that I love the color blue. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, this this issue is full of gorgeousness. Like a, there's an article on indigo dyeing with Amelia Poole, um, and a gorgeous uh, pillow project with uh, Aruna from Boku, who, uh, my friend Aruna, who's such a talented lady, and uh, it's a really pretty, pretty pattern. Carrie has a gorgeous shawl project that uses yarn from a verb for keeping warm, so a naturally dyed yarn, and I believe they're selling kits, which I would love to get my hands on. There's, anyway, it's just filled, filled with beautiful things. Um, some quilting, there's lots of knitting patterns, sewing patterns, and uh, it's just chock-a-block. This super adorable toy pattern from Susan B. Anderson, and there's, oh yeah, this sock pattern by Mary Jane Mucklestone. I just adore these, and these are definitely going in my queue. So well done, Mary Jane. Um, and uh, I think she she told me she is a, a viewer of the podcast. So hi, Mary Jane. She's actually uh, her and Sarah from Fiber Trek Studios are planning a retreat. And oh, it looks amazing. It's like a wild, wild fiber retreat in the wilds of Maine. Uh, I will put the details here. I highly, highly recommend if you want to learn from Mary Jane and and from Sarah, as well as have some really fun, wild adventures in uh, a gorgeous camp, a very secluded camp. You actually have to get there by a, a plane, a, like a aquatic plane, a plane that that can actually land on a lake. It just, it sounds like such a fun time, and I, if the American dollar, if the exchange wasn't so crazy, I would, I would absolutely love to join them, but anyway, I highly recommend you check that out, but to get back to this making magazine issue number three, absolutely beautiful. I am super thrilled to get this, and uh, also to be working with Mary Jane, it's just really epic. Mary, well, to work with Carrie through Mary Jane through Carrie, I guess. 
Um, this cardigan here, super pretty from Hannah Fettig. Pick it up. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful publication. Speaking of publications, last episode I talked about a book um, called Sans Idée, L'Aventure des Seventies. And I really hesitated to talk about it when I was planning my episode because I thought, okay, a French book about... 70s crafting like this is pretty um you know not maybe not a lot of people will be really interested in that but no i got so much feedback from so many of you who either grew up in the 70s so it brought back a lot of memories of the kinds of things that were around as you were growing up or the things that your mom was uh, into making as you were growing up but I also got a lot of feedback from people who remembered the magazine and who also really loved it so that was really I was so happy because I thought I'm this is going to bore people, but anyway, so thank you for those who reached out and told me that you were interested in my little, my little book review. It is a wonderful book, and so if you're into that type of aesthetic and you speak French, or if you, you know, you were around during that time and enjoyed the magazine, I, I highly recommend it. One of my viewers actually wrote to me and said, oh, I... I have an issue that I from Sans Idée, an original issue that you might really enjoy. And so she sent it to me and her name is Marie and thank you so much Marie. I really, really appreciate it. She sent me um, issue number 25. And uh, it features the beautiful, crazy tunic dress that I was drooling over when I talked about the book originally and uh, so anyway I, <laughs> I definitely I have to make that dress now it's official I have the, the full pattern it also has this this beautiful spread that I talked about from the book and a really cool article about yarn or about um, wool production in the Pyrenees and it's really interesting because they actually talk about uh, a method of shearing sheep chemically so they they give the sheep a chemical substance that makes them lose their hair kind of maybe like sort of like neat or nair I don't know <laughs> I think it's something that they actually ingest and in the article, they were saying, you know, this is going to put sheep shearers out of business. But uh, anyway, I don't think that that has happened. I had never heard of this method of, um, you know, shearing sheep. If you have, and if it's something that's still being used, I, I hope not. It sounds kind of, kind of gross. But anyway, I was very interested to read about that. Uh, in this article here about uh, wool production in the Pyrenees in uh, in France, but um, let me find that pattern for those who didn't see the last episode, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to interject with another photo of this uber 70s family. I love it. Oh yes, yeah, so here. <laughs> Here is my crazy dress that I want to make. It's all garter stitch. This, um, it, it's super bulky. It would be the most unflattering thing, but I, I just I have to make it now. And you know, even if I only wear it at home, even if my husband is horrified, <laughs> I, I, I have yarn that I could use. And actually, it would be a great project for Briggs and Little. The I often talk about that yarn because it's very inexpensive, and I think it would have the right, the right body and the right. Uh, they have lovely natural colors. So that is maybe something that I have in the works for next winter. So anyway, again, thank you, Marie, for sending me this issue. It's just been so fun to look through it and to see all these crazy 70s ads. Um, you know, like this ad for like a 
shaver. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed looking through that. And it has that old paper smell that I really enjoy. So thank you so much. Um, what next? Why don't I talk about, go from kind of the really rustic yarns to my less than rustic project, but that I'm still really, really enjoying my mini memories blanket. And um, so basically, let's see, the, the last time I showed this to you, I had knit the first row up to here and I put a little project marker, which is just a little, little teacup, <laughs> a little progress keeper, I should say. So here we are. I put in a second row because I, I couldn't wait. It's not obviously not wide enough for a, the type of blanket I want to make. I would like to make a probably like a double size, like a double bed, that kind of size. One that I would probably use it on the couch, but I, I do want a fairly generous blanket, um, not just a, a small lap blanket. And let's face it, I have a lot of yarn to use up. So um, yeah, I, I love working on this. I was going gangbusters for the first couple of weeks. And um, then I kind of, it took it took a bit of a sideline because I was just uh, busy with, with sample knitting, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And it's just fun to kind of go from one, uh, you know, from one color to the to the next. I've been more or less picking them randomly. I just kind of I have a basket with all of the different yarns that I'm using and I basically just kind of pick one and you know if it's if it's color if for whatever reason I don't really want to put that color in at that point I will pick again but I am trying to let go of um, being controlling and I am trying to um, just let fate decide what colors go where. So anyway, my little mini memories blanket, which is a very mini <laughs> blanket right now, has been uh, really joy. It's been a joy to work on. So speaking of my mini memories blanket, some of the yarn that I have been knitting into it is um, yarn that I got from a viewer. Her name is Robin, and she contacted me. Uh, she said she was a fan of the podcast, and she wanted to send me something for me and then for, uh, for a giveaway on the podcast. And her shop is an Etsy shop called October House. It's a beautiful, beautiful shop. She does some really, really gorgeous yarn. If you love... Um, more quiet, subtle, muted colors. Uh, there's a lot there for you. I actually bought some fiber from her maybe last year, and uh, it's so beautiful. I I haven't spun it yet because I just can't. It's too beautiful. I'm not a good enough spinner yet to do that. But I I will. Um, I I forgot to bring it, but I will show it to you eventually. Maybe I'll I'll try and spin with it fairly soon so I can show you. But anyway, so she contacted me and said that she had a new set of minis, uh, and it's called the Sojourn Sock Mini Skein Set, and the colorway is called Whisperings. And that's exactly what it is. It's uh, these really beautiful, beautiful, subtle colors. The names of the color, um, so it includes Mist, Cloudburst, Pearl, dove and sage and so there's a pale yellow a pale gray a darker gray a pale blue and kind of a greenish color which probably is the sage and it's just stunning here i'll show you on this side very very beautiful so i received a skein set and then she sent one for you which is absolutely lovely what i love about these colors to me they remind me of the ocean kind of the shore and the um the soft sand and all that and i always love these kinds of colors so so what does that mean it means that i'm going to be giving away this set of mini skeins and I decided that I would not do a contest. I'm just going to do 
um, a straight up giveaway. So if you go to my Ravelry group, and you leave a comment, I will have a question prompt. And the question will be, what are you most looking forward to this summer? And it can be kind of a seasonal thing, or it could be a, a personal event that you are uh, undertaking. You're going on a trip, you're graduating from college, you're getting married. Um, yeah, just tell me, or maybe you're just looking forward to picking strawberries or going for picnics or swimming in a lake. I would love to hear from you. I did it for spring and I did it, I believe, for autumn. And I really enjoyed it. I love reading everybody's answers and it kind of gets me all excited about the coming season. So head on over to the Gentle Knitter Ravelry group and there will be a giveaway prompt there for the Sojourn uh, Sock Mimi skein set. And of course, it, this would make beautiful, beautiful socks or uh, like I said, um, you could add it to your memories blanket or your mini memories blanket. Um, if you love kind of subtle colors the way I do, uh, this would be just a beautiful thing to add to your blanket. So, so that is that. Oh, I, I should show you. She also sent me a little bit of fiber to try out. And I believe this is called her Precious Metals. Uh, colorway. It's just be really beautiful, kind of a grello. So I'm very excited to try that. Um, I'll continue with the spinning and show you what I have been working on. I have basically spun up, I showed you in my last episode, some fiber that I had, uh, had done a bit of experimenting with my blending board. And um, so I did a little bit more and I spun a bunch of Rolags. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, it's kind of uh, some uh, beige cafe au lait fat fiber that I mixed with some very bright fiber, uh, which contain blue and purple and orange, and basically created a very, very soft and very subtle mix um, with little little pops of color and uh, once I ply that up I think I think it'll be really beautiful so I spun it woolen which is a method that I am not at all good at but with the roll egg preparation it does make it a little bit easier but certainly my singles are not that even I do think, however, once it's spun up, I think I might try and spin it as a three ply, just because I I think it would be really very nice as a as a plump um, as a really plump yarn. So that's that's my plan. We'll see. Um, whoops. Okay, I can't. This is what it would look like as a two ply but I think I'm gonna make it even thicker by making it three ply. We'll see. We'll see how much I end up with. Um, I've got all of this left, but I haven't prepared all of the fiber yet. So I probably have at least as much as this still to prepare, but it's just been really fun. I really, really enjoy uh, doing, making the roll eggs and then spinning it Woolen, which I've talked about many, many times, but just quickly, woolen means that when you spin woolen, your fiber is prepared in a way that where the, not all of the fibers are combed in one direction. And uh, with a roll lag, basically it's all rolled into a tube, but it comes off the end. So you don't have fibers that are going in being combed that way. They're, they're, horizontal, if you will, and they're kind of all going in. And and when you spin woolen, um, you're usually, the, the method or the technique that I was taught was you're actually, as the fiber is being drawn in, you're pulling back. 
and you're letting the twist go into the fiber directly. Um, if you're spinning worsted, generally you are pushing or, or pulling back, but you're really controlling the fiber a lot more. And I usually do um, a spinning technique that is kind of, I think some people call inchworm, where you're really just like going, you're feeding little bits at a time of the fiber into the, um, into the orifice, onto your bobbin. But this year, you're, you're kind of just pulling back, and then you pinch to kind of stop the twist from going into the fiber, and then you feed it onto your, onto your bobbin. And like I said, I'm not super good at it. Um, I, basically, for me, the challenge is to not let the whole twist go in and glob onto a big chunk of yarn or to make it so thin that it, it breaks and then, you know, you have to kind of thread your yarn through your through your spinning wheel again but anyway I'm I'm I am happy with the results it's super fluffy and uh, this is Polworth mostly Polworth so of course it's very soft Polworth is a beautiful beautiful breed and which I love so anyway I'm very happy with that um and then the last thing that I've been working on, it's something that I showed on my Instagram account, but I don't think I've ever talked to you about. It's being held in this really sweet, actually this would be, this would have been a project <laughs> for making magazine because it's uh, dyed with indigo and it's got um, some really sweet little uh, dot pattern on it. I just bought it at my local yarn store which is uh, Wabi Sabi if you're in Ottawa it is a yarn store in the Hintonburg neighborhood it's a really great store they are absolutely lovely and helpful and they carry some really beautiful things and it's very dangerous going in there so um, but yeah so local project bag and then I also have a uh, local yarn now this is in yarn that was in my stash and it is super wash but it's really beautiful it is um, a very beautiful deep indigo color the yarn is by Riverside Studios which is a company that is local to me in Wakefield Quebec and uh, the owner Catherine is a is a friend of mine hi Catherine and her stuff is absolutely gorgeous. She is such a talented dyer. And I would really love it, Catherine, if you would maybe start dyeing some non-superwash yarns. That would be fantastic. But uh, anyway, she's a great, she's very talented and very sweet lady. I am knitting a shawl, and this is kind of hard to show you. I should have not stopped in the middle of a row like that bad knitter but um, it's just basically a garter triangle super super simple um, and I love the tonal quality of the yarn here let me it's um, it's got almost a little bit of black in it and um, it's just really fine a, a fine garter triangle and I have been doing Basically, uh, the triangle, the way I achieved it was, this is just a super, super basic triangle shawl pattern, is you start with one stitch, and then you do a yarn over before you knit that first stitch, and that creates an extra stitch. And so you do that yarn over at the beginning of every row. And so what ends up happening is that you get these little loops um, on the edges that you can see here uh, there you can see them a little bit better there and when you're done the shawl you can pick up those loops and let me see if I have if I can show you here you pick them up and then you can knit a border either you can knit um, so you would pick up along the edges and you could knit a border out or you could also do um, you kind of cast on a certain number of stitches and knit a lace border um, going sort of vertically, I guess. I don't know how you 
there must be a term for that technique and I'm blanking on it but basically uh, my plan I don't know what I'm gonna do actually I was gonna say I'm gonna do this but I don't really know which which bat border pattern I'm gonna use but basically once you pick up all of the edging uh, and then you knit something you get this super pretty row of eyelets at the edge of your shawl and then whatever lace pattern you do outside of that and um, I just wanted a incredibly mindless project even more mindless than socks I don't remember why but I oh I think it was uh, I was I do remember now I was um, attending a conference a work conference at the beginning of April and I wanted a project that I could just work on without looking at all with you know not looking down whatsoever and socks I mean they are pretty mindless vanilla socks but you do get to a point where you have to look down so this was my completely mindless project and I had two two skeins of this yarn I don't have the labels so I'm not quite sure what the yardage is but obviously it's a pretty generous yardage and uh, so I it's not much to look at right now but it will be probably a uh, I would think a very very worn object this summer when you know when you have like the cooler evenings I think this will be a really lovely thing to wear so I'm quite quite happy with that and I believe that that is it for me I did want to mention that I have not yet announced the winner of the um, Picos de Europa hat cal that I did and the reason for that is that I am still waiting on some of the prizes that I will be giving out to the winner so I will still be drawing a winner for the finished objects thread as well as the chatter thread so if you are wondering what was going on with that I'm sorry that there's a bit of a delay but I am definitely have not forgotten and I will announce the I will uh, talk about the prizes and announce the winner hopefully fingers crossed in the next episode so stay tuned for that and on that note I hope that you have a beautiful coming week and that June comes in um, full of flowers and soft breezes and maybe a picnic or um, I just hope you have a chance to spend some time outside maybe knit outside I know that I am planning on installing or not installing but moving my spinning wheel onto the porch this afternoon and doing a little more of this <laughs> um, in the uh, in the beautiful breeze so anyway hope you're well and again thank you so much for being here and for making this podcast such a joy to make all right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.